no, you're going to be a cop from England. And I was like, what? A cop from England? You know? And the, I think everybody was a little leery of me at first because they were like, oh, wow, here's this like five foot three petite woman coming in and fighting. You could count on one hand the number of people who became living legends in the way Cynthia Rothrock has managed to become over her incredibly satisfying and glamorous career. From switching career paths to finding greatness in nearly everything she tries, Cynthia Rothrock is not just an inspiration to martial artists in the world looking to emulate her, but every single person who's followed her journey from the 80s up till now. And Cynthia's not even close to being done. She's come a long way since Yes Madam, where she was but a fresh-faced martial artist starring in a movie because it was a good opportunity. But looking at how Cynthia's managed her fame and her time in the spotlight is truly awe-inspiring, and she's still going strong. So join us as we take a look at the life of Cynthia, how she began her career, what she achieved, and exactly what really happened to her. I think after the first night, they respected me because I tried hard, I did everything they said, I got hurt, I didn't cry, you know. It was when she reached her teenage years that Cynthia developed an interest in martial arts after getting bored with dance and baseball. And her parents, supportive as they were, let her take lessons at their best friend's private gym. This moment, small as it may have been, was the first step Cynthia took towards securing herself the future she did. Little did she know, a hobby she loved so dearly would end up becoming her career and even catapult her into a kind of fame that came about so rarely for her peers and even her eventual successes. Her initial lessons in Tang Soo Do impressed her martial arts teachers so much, in fact, that they made her compete in an open karate competition as soon as she could. Her natural talent, combined with the skills she acquired from her trainers, enabled her to seem almost prodigal in her approach to martial arts. In fact, by the time she'd earned her very first black belt, she was already on her way to becoming a martial arts champion. By the year 1982, Cynthia was one of the premier kata practitioners and weapon competitors in the whole of the United States. Another interesting fact, back in the 80s, when Cynthia was first competing in martial arts championships, there were no divisions between the male and female competition categories, in either open or closed categories, and in those, she managed to win every possible title and rank she could to the point of being the undefeated World Karate Champion in both the forms and the weapons competition from the years 1981 to 1985. She managed to take first place in forms 32 times and first place in weapons 12 times in her first 38 times competing in tournaments. And all of this was done when she was competing in men's forms three out of four times, as there was no women's division. After all this, she was also hailed as Grand Master for coming out first place in four out of five fighting events. As a forms and weapons champion, Cynthia then found herself traveling the world performing the intricacies of her martial arts arsenal. In fact, this was also a huge factor in how she was propelled into fame in the martial arts world, as her dynamic flair, precision, and what can only be aptly described as panache dazzling her audience of hundreds and thousands of spectators from across the globe who made it a point to see her exhibits. Her self-defense and fight scenario, the former of which has been described as action-packed, was what garnered her the reputation for being a consumer professional in the world of martial arts. All this traveling and performing all over the world actually ended up becoming a big factor in exposing her to the masses, which in turn catapulted her to fame and made Cynthia become a household name in the martial arts industry. Amidst all this, let's count some of Cynthia's biggest achievements in martial arts of her career. So far, she holds seven black belts and sachets in countless Far Eastern martial arts disciplines. A few of these are Tang Soo Do, Taekwondo, Eagle Claw, Wushu, Northern Shaolin, Ng Ying Kung Fu, and Pai Lum White Dragon Kung Fu. Cynthia has managed to acquire hundreds of trophies for her skills and martial arts prowess, an achievement that is yet to be challenged by a competitor or a successor. She's also extremely proficient with weapons in her chosen discipline, as we've noted. In fact, some of these weapons that she boasts mastery over are Chinese weapons, such as the Chinese double broadswords, staff, Chinese nine-section steel whip chain, Chinese iron fan, and an assortment of Okinawan kabudo and Japanese bugei weapons. Some of her more recent achievements in martial arts have been her receiving her sixth-degree black belt in Tang Soo Do Mu Da Kwan in 2006. And for this feat, she was tested by Grandmaster Robert Kovaleski, 9th Dan and Chair of the Institute of Traditional Martial Arts. This feat of hers was later improved upon by herself, not once, but twice, and Cynthia was later promoted by him to 7th degree black belt in 2011 and 8th degree black belt in 2015. 
Moving a bit further back, in 1983, Rothrock was actually inducted into the Black Belt Magazine's Hall of Fame as their Female Competitor of the Year, and this itself is a remarkable achievement, since this made her the very first woman to ever appear on a martial arts magazine cover. Before this, she'd been featured in the August 1981 issue of Karate Illustrated. And over the years, she's managed to appear in over 300 stories and articles in both national and international publications. Later, in 2014, she was given the honor of winning the Legacy Award at the Urban Action Showcase and Expo at HBO. Two years later, she was inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Dr. Robert Goldman. Just a couple of years ago, in 2022, Cynthia received the Martial Arts Super Show Lifetime Achievement Award in Las Vegas. This in itself is a big deal, because previous recipients of this particular award have been the likes of Chuck Norris, Fumio Demura, Benny the Jet Aquides, and former Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell, among others. So, just the simple act of being honored with this award makes her a living legend, not that she particularly needed it to cement her status as a martial arts icon anyway. In 1986, Cynthia also co-authored a book with George Chung titled Advanced Dynamic Kicks. Now, while many in Cynthia's position would be content with their martial arts achievements, she was very open to opportunities that presented themselves to her. In her own words, Cynthia revealed how she became an actress in a 2017 interview. When asked how she ended up starring in the movies after being a five-time world martial arts champion in the early 80s, a question we all undoubtedly share, Cynthia made it sound like such a simple decision. She revealed that it was during her travels as a martial arts performer that the opportunity presented itself. She was on a West Coast team at the time, a group that wandered the globe doing all sorts of demonstrations, when the team leader was called by none other than Paul Maslak, the editor of Inside Kung Fu at the time. He revealed that there was a Hong Kong company there auditioning at the time, and that they were specifically looking for martial arts performers who could emulate legendary Bruce Lee. The team leader actually ended up asking Paul if the offer only extended to the men in the group, or if women could also audition for the part. He simply responded that they very much could, although the people auditioning were really looking for a guy. So, the entirety of Cynthia's team flew down and did the weapons, fighting, and self-defense techniques for the casting directors. Lo and behold, after watching Cynthia's technique, the casting director, Corey Yuan, changed his mind at that very moment and explained that he was going with a girl and not a guy for the role. They signed the martial artist and we could say, the rest is history. That said, we can hardly ignore her impressive filmography. With over 60 acting credits under her belt, Cynthia Rothrock is definitely a force to be reckoned with. To be able to so fluidly and organically change the trajectory of your whole career, and to do so while maintaining the kind of credibility that she has, is a feat within itself. Her first martial arts movie after being discovered by Golden Harvest in Los Angeles came about two years after her audition. In 1985, Cynthia starred in Yes, Madam, alongside prolific actor Michelle Yar. In an interview years later, she revealed that the appeal for her was that she wanted to do a family film that had a good message for children, and she enjoyed the fact that she got to play a mum in that movie, given how she has a daughter who was the same age at the time. As for her experience filming in Hong Kong, a place so foreign to her, she revealed that she didn't really know anything when she went there. In fact, Cynthia said that she kept envisioning in her mind that she was going to Han's Island from Enter the Dragon while on the plane. She even thought that she would be in Chinese clothes, with a wig adorned with braids, engaging in fight scenarios. Cynthia also recalled that she'd only seen old period Hong Kong movies up until this point and was quite surprised upon arrival. The local production team had different plans, telling her, No, you're playing a cop from England, and your name is Cindy. In this foreign country, she didn't know anybody, and the only actor she was familiar with there was Jackie Chan. She said that all the unfamiliar faces and cultural disparity added to her bewilderment. It was a crazy experience for Cynthia, especially as a first-time actress, marking her first encounter with the thought, uh-oh, what do I do? On set for her first movie, the same film that would jumpstart her acting career, she claimed to have been treated like family. In her first ever scene, she managed to assert herself a great fighter, given it was the famous airport scene. She even revealed that the filming for the last action scene in Yes, Madam took place over the course of a full month, something fairly uncommon in Hollywood. In fact, it was even common knowledge that after the movie, both Cynthia and Michelle were launched and on their way to becoming two of the most successful female action stars in the world. 
After this positive filming experience, Cynthia found herself more open to pursuing acting as a full-time career, one she'd work out alongside her already pretty successful martial arts career. After the massive box office success of her first ever movie, she ended up staying in Hong Kong until 1988. In this brief time, she starred in seven more movies there. Cynthia revealed that once she started getting more popular and her prices started going up, film studios started seeing the value in making more movies that starred women as central protagonists, capable of saving themselves without a man's interference. She cited examples of movie with Kathy Long, Karen Shepard, and Mimi Laseos, even as she mentioned that those movies didn't do quite as well as hers for one reason or another. According to Cynthia, this poor reception could be one of the reasons why there weren't many more female action stars in the 1980s, or even today. She believed that it was covertly decided back then that women action stars weren't going to make money unless they were the victims and a man would come and save them. She even said it's just what the industry believes and that when she saw The Expendables, she was baffled that she wasn't even asked. It's evident that today, Cynthia very much sees herself in the same talent that we all saw back in the 80s and even seems to scorn some recent movies and their approach towards starring women in lead action roles. Turns out, Cynthia thinks that in more recent movies today, we're seeing more women in action, but not necessarily women action stars, that they're mostly actresses that are physical and have a good stunt double. It's confusing to her, especially given how she's still waiting to be cast in her first A-listed movie. In her five years in Hong Kong, Cynthia worked with Kung Fu greats Sammo Hung and Yuan Biao, during that Asian tenure, she, unbeknownst to her, has set a record for becoming the very first non-Chinese Westerner to carry an action movie single-handedly in Hong Kong. In fact, she left Hong Kong as one of the most celebrated action stars in Hong Kong cinematic history. One thing Cynthia is not afraid of being is unfailingly honest. The fighter and actress seems so incredibly authentic in all of her interviews that it becomes quite impossible to see her as anything but a friend, recounting all that she got up to while traveling the world. This is why, when she revealed in an interview that she was not aware of Godfrey Ho's notorious reputation back when she first signed with him, it felt completely candid and even hilarious. She said that she'd only signed on for the first movie she did with him because of the big paycheck. She did touch up upon the reputation thing though, and said that it was difficult when it came to paying the cast and crew that weren't playing major roles. In fact, she even found it hilarious when one of her scenes for a particular movie was rehashed and reused for another without her consent. When the interviewer brought up just how surprised they were that Cynthia was given this big paycheck in the first place, given how Godfrey is notorious for not paying his actors well at all, she revealed that was a big problem. She was the only one who got paid. Another movie experience she talked about honestly was when she did Undefeatable, a movie with a questionable plot. When asked if she had any reservations about this movie, she said that at the time she simply prioritized getting paid over working on scripts that were critically acclaimed. But in hindsight, she since realized how the plot is fairly funny. She did also comment on his reputation as a very niche cult classic when she talked about the 12 million views for the final sequence on YouTube. She even said that it was not her favorite film, and that to her, it felt more like a comedy than a serious movie of sorts. Even at the time of the movie's release, she knew that the movie was not going to be one very beloved by professional critics. After seeing what a huge success Cynthia was in Hong Kong, her management company, Golden Harvest Productions, decided to try and launch Cynthia into the US action movie landscape. They did so with a series of action movies called China O'Brien and its sequel at China O'Brien in 1990. Of course, it could be argued that these movies never made it big in domestic theaters, and as such, should immediately be disregarded as failures. But it would also be a lie to state that the movies left no impact. If anything, the movies went on to become favorites in international video stores and cable networks. Even today, they're among some of the action and martial arts aficionados' all-time favorites. In fact, Cynthia went on to do movies in the US for the next 10 years or so. This movie was aided by Professor Pierre Brown, some of her most notable works out of her 30 or so in this period include Guardian Angel, Honor and Glory, No Surrender 2, No Retreat, and Prince of the Sun. Now, while none of these were ranked extremely highly by critics, it's a general understanding that these movies were pretty successful as far as B-grade action movies go. This might not sound all that glamorous, but for the 80s, this was fairly standard procedure. This was because action movies were a dime a dozen at the time, but could, if the actors were skilled and talented enough, pay a hefty starring paycheck. 
She was once asked if she thought the genre itself needed more women like her, and she responded saying that the genre itself isn't as popular in the US as it is in Asia. Here, she cited the example of Gina Carano, whose movie didn't do too well. She said it was rare for women to fight in movies, even when she was a big part of that genre, and she'd usually end up being given the subordinate of supporting roles even in her most well-received movies. And yes, now that attitudes are changing a fair bit regarding the material female action stars are getting, she's looking forward to what's in store for her and her co-stars, most of whom are still doing movies. Eventually in 1997, Cynthia made her debut in television movies, with her first 1997 TV movie, The Dukes of Hazard: Reunion, as Bertha Jo. She also worked on the animated series Eek the Cat, which premiered in September of 1992. And just a year after that, she was awarded the honor of being the inspiration for a video game creator. And not just any video game, this is one we've all played and loved. In the game, the character of Sonya Blade was heavily and transparently inspired by Cynthia. Eventually, she even landed an appearance in the television series Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, as Hera's second enforcer. After she starred in the 2004 movie Extreme Fighter as Sally Kirk, she sought a hiatus. But eventually, as her daughter came into the world, she felt as though she needed to prioritize motherhood. At the age of 21, Cynthia got married to her instructor at the time, Ernest Rothrock. Unfortunately, their marriage wasn't one that stood the test of time, and the two eventually parted ways and got divorced around the same time her daughter was born. Around this time, Cynthia took a small break from her acting career to focus on motherhood when she had her daughter. She said she didn't want to be traveling so much because at the time, most of the movies she was doing were set for at least being filmed out of the country. For example, in 1999, she was filming Above the Law the shooting of which was taking place in Puerto Rico, and her daughter was two years old at the time. At the beginning of her motherhood journey, she was okay with traveling with her daughter. But as the years passed and her daughter started school, she couldn't whisk her off to a country for weeks and months at a time to film a movie. And so, while she never quite completely stopped doing movies for an extended period of time, she did slow down the frequency at which she was making these movies. As the years went on, Cynthia made another pivotal career switch, and although she never fully gave up acting, she started moving towards a more stable means of making money. She started teaching martial arts and doing seminars, and now even co-owns the studio she teaches at. By the time her daughter became a teenager, though, it was when Cynthia realized something important. Her daughter, as most teenagers at that age, did not necessarily enjoy hanging out with her mother all the time, regardless of how cool Cynthia was. Especially as a single mom who was an only child herself, she just didn't know how to cope with it for a while. Gradually, she came to realize that she'd be much better off just doing something fulfilling with her time, especially now that her daughter was old enough not to depend on her time and energy as much. It was not as though she had to put a stop to her acting career. It was actually in 2012 when Cynthia felt comfortable enough to dip her toes in the world of acting again. She put her classes on pause and started focusing on trying to get work. She ended up booking two films, Santa's Summer Home and Badass Showdown, but it was actually Mercenaries and the Martial Arts Kid that decisively put her back on the map. As for her role in the former, she recalled getting the call for the role while on her way to accept a great honor. Cynthia was on her way to the International Sports Hall of Fame hosted by Robert Goldman and Arnold Schwarzenegger, as she was the first person in the whole association to be a martial artist to get the award. So, it was a really great honor in getting it from Arnold himself. And on her way there, she got a call saying that she needed to turn around and come right back because they wanted her to play this role in Mercenaries. And she really did want to do it because she was going to make enough from that role to get her SAG insurance back. While she was thinking about all of this, she got another call from the same person telling her to go to receive that honor anyway, because Arnold would have been upset otherwise, especially since he was presenting it himself, and there was a lot of press there. So, she was allowed to go and receive her award, but she had to fly back the next day on a very chaotic schedule. What was confusing to Cynthia, though, was how they cast her in a role without any fighting, given how that is usually her primary skill set. And when audiences hear her name in a credit sequence, they expect there to be at least some fighting. She even expressed interest in working on a Yes, Madam 2 with Michelle Yeoh. In 2023, Rothrock co-produced, co-wrote, and starred in her upcoming film Black Creek, a movie in which she showcased her talent in not just acting and fighting, but also production and writing. 
The movie's tone is dark, gritty, and dystopian. It's a classic Western action martial arts film, featuring a strong, no-holds-barred female protagonist portrayed by Cynthia Rothrock, alongside a co-stars from a Robert Claus film, China O'Brien, Richard Norton, and Keith Cook. It's undeniable that Cynthia Rothrock's movie career, shooting schedule, has taken her to some of the most exotic locations on the planet. Similarly, it's also undeniable that she has endured some of the harshest working conditions actors are sometimes subjected to, all in the name of making action-adventure motion pictures. Of course, Cynthia herself reassures her audience that all those experiences, good and bad, were incredibly worthwhile to her. She's definitely had her moments in the limelight, where she's been celebrated like no other, a film personality that has been a true martial artist from the beginning of her film career. She's also expressed the same level of notoriety and fan reception at film festivals all over the world. In addition to countless hundreds and hundreds of karate and kung fu tournaments she has attended over the past decade. It can even be said that fame has followed Cynthia throughout every stage of her illustrious career, be it her martial arts career or her acting stint. She's been a favorite of the camera since she first stepped on the scene, and part of that is because of her loyal, cult-like following. In fact, it could even be said that she has now, in a lifetime so far, achieved the same level of fame and greatness as her predecessors, Chuck Norris and Jackie Chan.